how could I see you guys? Woodland landscape. This particular painting relates in regards to the other oil paintings by Segas, which are approximately a little bit more than 20, closest to his etchings. The technique he's best known for and the most magical. The painting was discovered in early 2000 and it took the previous owner approximately 12 to 13 years to prove it. It is certainly one of the paintings with the most accomplished provenances. And I would like to point out two former owners of them. One of them is Friedrich II of Prussia and he hated Dutch landscape art or genre paintings. He hated everything. He also hated his parents. He hated everything what his parents did to him including the inheritance of the collection which included that painting. So he shifted it on as quickly as he could to another relative and he collected then French 18th century art, uh, especially Watteau in his circle. 150 years later, another person owned the painting, an artist, Johann Christian Clausendahl, best known as a German romantic artist, friend and um, housemate of Caspar David Friedrich. Both lived in Dresden and Dahl occupied the first floor and the second floor and Friedrich the floors above. People came to Dahl, they bought pictures. Dahl actually started out as a dealer rather than an artist and among his holding was this painting. And like today, some painting dealers or an old-fashioned way of painting dealers, you would buy a painting and you put your own style of frame around it. It's a little bit like a label, so you would know where the painting comes from and Dahl had his own frame, a frame which one would associate with his pictures. And just by reframing this painting, the name of the artist Segas vanished. He was primarily a printmaker and his prints is, is a dream. Everybody would, I mean, everybody would love to have one. Everybody would love to find one, but it's impossible. It is every print collector's dream to walk into a place and to find a print by Segas. It doesn't exist. There's a beautiful story, uh, a Dutch man called Fritz Lucht, who desperately wanted a Segas print. And he went to Berlin to the Kupferstich cabinet and said, I would like to have a Segas print. Uh, you have a duplication, you have a duplicate. And of course, it doesn't exist. They're all unique prints, but they come with different variations. They would come in different colors. And he would offer them a drawing by Michelangelo. Berlin accepted. Fritz looked at his Segas print and Berlin had another Michelangelo drawing, which later, obviously, was rejected. Um, so if we, if we turn it around, the remains of old inscription and labels and a seal, and that also gave the indication for identifying the provenance at a later stage. Hello. I'm Domenico and I'm from Bursio Fine Art. We specialize in Italian decorative arts um, from the 16th to the 19th century. And today we're here to talk about the Alessandri table. Uh, this is a very extraordinary piece um, of um, Pietra Dura um, workshop. That means um, uh, Pietra Dura is something between marble and precious stones. This was made in the Opificio delle Pietre Dure towards the end of the 16th century. It was designed by Bernardo Bontalenti, who was one of the most important architects working for the Medici uh, in the period. Uh, and um, here together we have um, a selection of extremely rare marbles, um, some of which are ancient. Uh, we have uh, Egyptian alabaster, together with three other kinds of alabaster, um, Lumachella, um, Rosso and Giallo Antico, Lapis Lazuli, uh, and um, Coral, and uh, cornelian. 
Um, the table was commissioned either by or for the Alessandri family, and it remained in the family uh, until uh, a few years ago. Um, we can read on the object the long history of the piece. Uh, for example, in the 17th century, these small details in coral and lapis lazuli were added to celebrate um, the uh, appointment of a member of the family as gonfaloniere. It was a, 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 a title similar to that of a um, mayor of, of um, the city of Florence. Uh, in the 18th century, instead, the table was cut in half to make two consoles, um, and it was put together uh, again only in the mid-19th century when a member of the Alessandri family was the director of the Uffizi Gallery and had a, a more philological understanding of uh, the artworks in his collection. On that occasion, an extravagant base in gilt um, wood was commissioned, uh, but we decided to present the object today here uh, without the base to um, you know, put in the spotlight the extraordinary quality of the design, the craftsmanship and the material of, uh, of this piece. Only a handful of them are of pieces of this quality are known, uh, and all of them are in public collections today, and the Prado in the um, Palazzo Pitti and uh, the last one to enter a public collection uh, was sold by our gallery. Um, it was, it's called the Tavolino di Gioie. It was sold to Louvre Abu Dhabi um, a few years ago. And we think that this is the last one and um, still on the market.